Hello, good afternoon, good evening, good morning, and welcome. It's Nurse Richard the Wax Wizard. Thank you for joining me. Now, this was a fascinating uh, case, and um, the reason for that, and it was quite a scary one as well, and the reason for that was, you'll already know from the title of the video, if you've clicked on the thumbnail and uh, wondered what's happened there. Uh, let me tell you, this patient passed out. They fainted. Which and she's absolutely fine now, so don't panic. But this is, um, it is a risk uh, with earwax uh, that some procedures, uh, some people can have uh, this response to it. It is really rare. It doesn't happen very often. I think in the years I've been doing, it's only happened twice. I want to say. Uh, so yeah, once uh, last week this happened, and then uh, a couple of years ago. And it's, it's always really important to take a, a case history. Um, as, with, as with any medical procedure, you need to ask them if they've got a history of, of fainting, passing out for whatever reason. And if, ideally, if they know what the cause is, then great. Um, now, this woman had uh, passed out in the past, I believe, when she, had, uh, when she was exposed to too much sun. Um, but that said, uh, she'd had her ear procedures done before and it never caused her an issue. Um, before I forget, subscriber of the day today is Siobhan Sid. I uh, thank you for your many messages asking to be subscriber of the day. And so that is you today. So congratulations and uh, I hope you enjoy being subscriber of the day. If you want that to be you, just leave us a comment down below and ask and leave me a comment saying I would love to be the subscriber of the day, but you've got to be subscribed to the channel. Um, and good luck. <laughs> so. The, the reason why this lady passed out, and I think in the end we had to try and irrigate this ear because she found it uh, uncomfortable because you won't see it yet. It is really satisfying when you see this thing come away as well. There's um, a sheet of dead skin stuck on this lady's eardrum. And <clears throat> this appointment, this uh, procedure was done over two appointments um, because obviously she passed out before we finished, so we, we couldn't carry on. Uh, understandably and uh, the reason why she did hopefully you'll see it after I remove this it's a bit of a faff it's like these kind of dry sheets that have got lots of hair embedded in it you can probably see it deep down there uh, a layer stuck on the eardrum now this and it's when the, the even the eardrum sheds its its top layer and very rarely it fails to do so and you can end up with these little weird disc shaped things I think I have removed uh, one like this in the past. I think the video might be called Flying Saucer Eardrum because that's actually what it looked like, <laughs> bizarrely. And uh, this was just like that. So we're going to try and pull this forward first. I'm using the, the uh, fine end tube here. I think maybe I should have had a bigger one looking at it there, but it looked like it was a peel to start with. But now it's come away from the ear canal wall. Could probably get something a bit bigger in there, but. I don't know if I do or not. <laughs> anyway, I do have a, a few messages to tell you because I haven't actually recorded a video for maybe over a week or so because I've been off work. And you won't notice the difference, by the way. If you're watching these, you will have seen one two days ago that was recorded a long time ago. Um, and I've been off because I've been... Um, took some time off work to because my daughter's been in for eye surgery, which I know a lot of you regulars will know. And if you're asking me how she's doing, she's doing absolutely fine. So uh, thank you. She had it done for five, five, six days ago. And she's recovering well. Yeah, not back at school yet. Takes a bit of time to recover from these things. Her eyes are very red, very bloodshot. Um, she looked like some kind of zombie when she came around. It was, it was, it was weird to look at. She actually looked like, I don't know whether he's been on What's he called? He might have been on like a, one of the talent shows um, where this, this fellow who can like make his eyeballs pop out. <laughs> He's quite famous all over the internet. It looked just, it looked just like that when she came round. Uh, but yeah, she's looking more normal. And it, it, we, we think it has worked because both her eyes look really straight. And that was the main reason why, we, uh, why she had that done, obviously. So as you can see, you've got this thick disc type layer of dead skin on the eardrum where it's failed to migrate so you will see me come away really quickly because she found this uh, quite uncomfortable um, 
Now I'm going to see if I can lift it up from the edge. She was quite nervous, understandably. And that, that, that may well have contributed to, to, to what happened. Um, no, it's, it's, at this point, it's really crusty. So it, it's actually firmer than it looks, despite it having a bit of oil on it. And it's not really do much as I try and pull it off there. It is stuck to the eardrum. So I think I'm going to have one go in this center here. And you just saw a little twitch and you'll see me come away very quickly, <clears throat> any minute. And that's when the patient could feel it. And it's part of the reason why we decided to go, to go for irrigation as well. Because you don't want it uh, any procedure to be uncomfortable for anybody. It's it's rare that it is, but it can happen sometimes. So I'm just going to touch up on that, and there you go. Really suddenly came out of the ear. So I'm just going back in just to check that there's no trauma or any damage, and there wasn't. So at this point, uh, we decided to go in with the irrigated. To see if we could loosen that off. Now you will see it loosen. And you will, it's a slightly different angle as well because I'm holding the endoscope a different way around um, when I'm doing this. So what what happened here? So you will see it a bit blurry to start with, but it will become clearer and you will see it slowly lifting off the eardrum. Um, what's happened here, you, there's a couple of reasons why sometimes it can make you feel a bit odd having your ears done. You can get the uh, caloric effect, that's uh, to do with a, a change of temperature. You know, going from warm water to suction, that can make you feel a bit off and a bit funny. Um, but I think what's happened here is she's had a auricular syncope, which is, is like a, a vasovagal response, um, which 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 happens when the the uh, the auricular branch of the vagus nerve. Uh, runs down the side of the ear, and when that's stimulated, it can do a few things. It can trigger a cough sometimes, or it can trigger uh, a syncope, which is basically when the um, blood pressure drops, heart rate drops, and then you get a failure of blood going to the brain. When you get a failure of blood going to the brain, you feel really faint. And it came on extremely quickly for this lady. You'll see this thing lifting. Um, and when we stopped this, she just said, I don't feel right. I feel a bit odd. I'm seeing spots in front of my eyes. So at that point, we obviously we stopped straight away, and I could I could see her going out. So for anyone who, out there who does earwax removal procedures, whether you use uh, irrigation or marrow suction, this is a risk. So you need to know wh what to do. And so as she, as she was going, she obviously went very pale, very white. So we laid the chair back. You should always have a chair that's got a recliner on it, so you can uh, lay it back flat. And you need to get the patient's uh, legs lifted up. So better still if you've got a, a foot plate or a, a reclining bed. And then that way uh, the blood f will flow back to the brain and you'll stop feeling dizzy and you'll come round. <clears throat> now, I, don't, <laughs> I, I used to have a foot plate, but people kept uh, tripping over it, so I removed it. Um, but what I do in, in this instance, this is where we had a bit of a giggle about it afterwards. What I had to do is when I, I lay the patient flat, actually I have to I lifted her legs up and rested them on my shoulders in front of her so so when she came round I mean she knew what had happened straight away and she, as soon as she looked at me uh, she's, she's looking at me staring over her with both her feet on either of my shoulders which may have been a bit odd if you weren't, weren't expecting it but she knew it was at, it was this point here where she went and she was only out a couple of seconds or so it, it really didn't take long and uh, so this was about four or five days later what I suggested she do I gave her some uh, sodium bicarbonate drops said uh, go home and uh, put this in a couple of times a day and it'll soften up this crispy disc that's on the eardrum and obviously being really careful here because obviously we were both quite nervous <laughs> about this but it came away so easily and you'll just see it just jump up and really satisfyingly just peel away from the eardrum and hearing restored and there we go and you'll get a little glimpse of this little disc as well look at that <laughs> anyway so yeah if you are an ear care specialist be mindful that this may happen and be prepared um so there's the eardrum looking absolutely wonderful now anyway i hope you enjoyed that but for now take care of yourself and i'll see you later Ta -da.